AMD's IPC increase to Zen 2 is gigantic. Microsoft is buying the gaming industry, and will AMD go to ray tracing? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Melt. Before I get started, I wanted to apologize for my horrible voice. I've been sick the past week, and after going to the doctor, I've just gotten worse. So hopefully they'll be able to get me some meds that'll actually get me back to normal. With that out of the way, AMD recently had their next Horizon event, where they unveiled their upcoming 7 nanometer GPUs and CPUs. The event was mostly made of their machine learning GPUs and server CPUs, but it held some interesting bits of information from the 7 nanometer process and new architecture that pertains to Ryzen. Well, I'm still talking about it today because quite a bit of outlets, including myself, missed a seemingly small declaration in the footnotes of AMD's next Horizon press release. Here's the thing though, it's not small at all. AMD states, quote, estimated increase in instructions per cycle is based on AMD internal testing for Zen 2 across micro benchmarks measured at 4.53 IPC for DKERN plus RSA compared to prior Zen 1 generation CPU measured at 3.5 IPC for DKERN plus RSA using combined floating point and integer benchmarks. Yeah, for those who don't have a calculator out, that's a 29% IPC increase. Of course, that's only in floating point and integer benchmarks, and it's only compared to Zen 1, not Zen Plus, but it's still a huge number. Don't forget that IPC is the average instructions a CPU can calculate per clock cycle. The only issue is that IPC varies based on each application via how well it utilizes the architecture. With that said, remember that I did report not too long ago from Bits and Chips, who said that Zen 2 will get a 13% IPC increase from Zen Plus in, quote, scientific tasks. Basically, with the promised clock increases, Zen 2 is shaping up to be a powerhouse of an architecture, and with it, 3rd Gen Ryzen. Next up for today, in a bid to possibly offer first-party titles in the next generation console war, Microsoft has acquired In Exile and Obsidian Entertainment. Now, both of these companies are known for some pretty incredible RPGs, like In Exile Entertainment's Wasteland 2 or Obsidian Entertainment's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which is probably one of my favorite RPGs, might I add, Pillars of Eternity, Fallout New Vegas, and plenty more. What's crazy is that with these two, Microsoft has either acquired or started seven gaming companies this year alone. So yeah, the company seems to be pretty serious about first party titles moving forward. Let's just hope these potential future games don't go the way of Scalebound. Lastly for today, for those curious about AMD's future with DirectX Ray Tracing, they're… meh? In an interview with 4Gamer.net, the head of AMD's GPU division, Mr. David Wang, stated that they won't be utilizing ray tracing in games until all of their products, from the low end to the high end, can utilize the technology. Now, that's in stark contrast to what NVIDIA seems to be doing, since so far we've only seen 1080p frame rates with even their highest in 2080 Ti. Of course, that does mean the company can focus on price to performance in normal FP32 compute. And if real-time ray tracing doesn't go as NVIDIA sees it, the company could be in some real trouble with potentially useless hardware inside their RTX cards. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Do you think ray tracing will become a thing, or do you just want Zen 2 to hurry up? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel for all things gaming and hardware, consider donating to the Patreon. You can check that out in the description below. And as always, have a great day.